Hey guys, what's going on? Mr. Happy here, and I just wanted to do a video about the Xbox One. About? About the Xbox One, which was just announced yesterday to many people's great disappointments. That's right. Now, I didn't watch the highlights. I didn't watch the reveal. I'm not particularly an Xbox fan to begin with, but I will give this to Xbox 360. I always admit, whenever I want to pull, whenever I want to have a strong community, Whenever I want to be vocal on a video game, while I'm playing it, that is, whenever I want to speak with the people I'm playing with, Xbox is usually the better place to go. It's a lot more, int people are a lot more interactive on the system, are a lot more active on FPS titles and multiplayer titles altogether. The PlayStation 4 is more for people who like playing a solid game mostly by themselves, and if they want to play some multiplayer, most of the people don't have headsets, most of the people don't talk, they just play, enjoy it, and move on to the next thing. So... That's how it is in this generation, but the next generation, the PlayStation 4 is doing all it can for video games. Between the streaming, between the help me out mode, between, you know, the games that they they reveal, they're really pushing for it to be a gaming system. However, the Xbox One is not trying to be a video game system is the problem. The Xbox One is trying to be, and in case you're wondering, it's called the Xbox One because it's an all-in-one device. It's, it's television, entertainment, movies, and video games. What's the problem with that? It's a gaming system. Okay, here's what's going to end up happening. People are going to buy it for some reason. I can't tell. And they're going to realize it's only got a couple of games for it. They, they only announced two release titles. Not great. <laughs> Not great. In fact, the Halo announcement was for a TV show. Most of the things they announced were for TV shows and were for the entertainment side of the system. There was, all, there was barely any mention of the video games that the system is going to be uh, hosting. You know, there were two mentioned, but they, they weren't, like, impressive. They were just, just two games. When people don't want to buy a system that's only have two games when it comes out, so I hope they've got more planned in the coming months. But, that's not the main problem with the Xbox One. Sure, it's okay. It's okay for it to have entertainment purposes and still do video games. That's perfectly fine. No one's complaining. In fact, that's that's most would say that's a pretty great bundle depending on the price. You know, you get all these you get all these built-in like TV modules and entertainment modules. You know, it, who's to say that that's a bad thing? Well, it's a bad thing when you do this. Now, the Xbox One requires the game to be downloaded from a disc onto the Xbox One. Again, not a problem. PlayStation did that a lot. It forced you to install it. You still needed the disc, but it helped with load times. And uh, the Xbox One, on the other hand, it is a full install, so you don't need the disc at all. Here's the problem. When you're done installing that disc, you now have a license for that disc. That $60 you paid for the disc is the license you paid for the disc. When you pass that disc on to your friend and your friend wants to play it, guess what? Your friend's got to pay for his own license. That means that that disc is still going around worth the same amount of money. So what does that mean? Sorry about that. That means that uh, if they keep that model, that uh, used games is going to be in trouble. Now, a lot of people have been worried about rumors revolving the Xbox. The, everyone's been calling, but back when everyone was calling the Xbox 720, everyone was focused on the rumors that used games would become completely useless on the system. And while that's not entirely true here, for the most part, it is. I mean, if my friend wants to borrow my game, He's not going to pay $60 from me to get it. The odds of that actually happening are slim to none. That people will actually go, oh, okay. Well, I'm like, yo, I bought this game. Do you want to borrow it? Yeah, uh, hold on. I just got to make sure I have $60 in my account so I can charge it properly. Now, I've heard from some sources that it's going to be a full $60 fee. And that I've heard from other sources that the fee is going to be smaller. But uh, from what I understand, you are paying for a license for the game, so you do have to pay for the entire fee. That's just what I've heard. If there, if you have any sort of, uh, if you've heard anything different, please link your source in the comments below. And the next problem, those discs still have a limited amount of licenses, which means if you lend it out to, let's say that it has three licenses, you get one yourself and you lend it out to two friends, that disc is useless now. That disc, you could just you can go play skeet with that disc if you wanted to shoot it, whatever you want to do with it, break it with a hammer. Uh, I don't know, 
peel off the paper and uh, and put it on your wall. I don't know what the hell people do with the discs nowadays. I don't I don't bother. Um, and that's just you, it makes you wonder: Were they even thinking about the video game industry when they conceived this idea? Now, Microsoft, you know, they know a lot about video game piracy because they know a lot about their own softwares like uh, Microsoft getting pirated and whatnot. They're no stranger to what happens when you don't take steps against it. Unfortunately, where there's a will, there's a way. And who knows what people are going to start trying to do in order to uh, in order to make in order to get their games that they want. You know, people are willing to go above and beyond, take extra steps that aren't necessarily legal in order to get their games that they want to play. Now, are there any redeeming qualities to the Xbox One? I feel like television, yeah. <laughs> uh. Other than that, I don't really know. Uh, it doesn't always require an online connection, but there was some some interview after the after the you know they announced it that said that while you wouldn't always require one, you would re- require one at least once per 24 hours, which which uh, the article assumed was uh, was for checking and authenticating the system and the games. And there's no sort of mention of what'll happen if you don't do that. Uh, that's one thing that's decent. At least it doesn't always require an internet connection because, oh, God, Games for Windows Live. You, you all know it's Microsoft's fault, Games for Windows Live. It's all your fault, and that, and I fucking hate them. But something needs to be done about the system. No gamer in this day and age, in this economy, is going to be excited for a system that doesn't have much promise in the gaming industry. All anything that it's it does do in the gaming industry is being is sorely hampering the video game industry, or at least the used game industry, I should say. And it just takes out the fun of video games. It's what the best part about a video game is buying it, and your friends like really wanting to borrow it from you because it's just one of those high game, one of those like high anticipated games, and you have the right of beating it first and then uh, handing it off to them. That's gone. Everything that you loved about borrowing and renting games, and it's all gone. Gamefly won't be able to do that anymore. Uh, with Xbox games, they're only going to be able to do the classic games. Uh, and the PlayStation 4, I have a feeling a lot it's going to get a lot more attention now because it hasn't said anything regarding what it's going to do. The only thing we know about that is that it's not backwards compatible, which is bullshit. But the Xbox One isn't backwards compatible either. So, there you go. PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One have one thing in common. They both aren't backwards compatible. And put, at least the PlayStation 4 is trying to be a gaming console. So, sorry Xbox fans, but if you didn't watch the Xbox One reveal, go watch it again. Or go watch it for the first time, I should say. And I'm sorry, I didn't hate the Xbox so much that I would have wished it was this bad. And unfortunately it is. So, I don't know if I'll even be a console gamer in six months because... The industry is doing all it can to to wrap its hands around your neck. And it's only a matter of time. So thank you for watching. If you have any of your own thoughts about the Xbox One, if you have any sort of articles to share about details that might redeem the system, I want people to post links if they can find anything that can redeem the system. Any sort of post, uh, post-reveal post interview, any sort of detail that might I might have overlooked. Obviously, I'm not, I haven't spoken about the whole system because, you know, there are other details out there that I don't know about. But I want people to prove me wrong because I don't want the system to be this bad. I want the system to have some success and then me just not prefer the system over maybe the Wii or maybe the PlayStation 4 or something. But I do not wish this upon the video game world. I do not wish that you, for you, Xbox fans, to deal with the shitty way of the system being handled. So post links in the comments below. Please like and subscribe if you like this video. I've got plenty of other content coming on the coming on the channel. But that's all I have for now. I hope you guys have a uh, good Wednesday if don't, if you're in the United States and it's not Thursday or Tuesday, wherever the hell you are. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching and. Uh,